Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, greetings in the name of Jesus. It is um, my honor and pleasure to be able to talk to you, um, Nanam Shanje. Um, our focus in, in our last segment um, was from Matthew chapter 13, um, reading from verse 24. Uh, we looked at <clears throat> the importance um, and the character of uh, kingdom citizens. The word of God teaches that the seed that was planted uh, in the field <clears throat> bore fruits. It, it produced fruits. And we looked at um, how Matthew chapter 7 verses 15 and 16 tells us that uh, we will be able to distinguish whether someone is true or false by the fruits they bear. And we were able to conclude um, in our previous uh, episode that by fruits, uh, by fruit, the word of God is referring to issues of conduct. And um, we were able to say there is a conduct that is expected of all kingdom citizens because kingdom citizens are supposed to be known by that conduct. I mean, the word of God is very clear. It says, let your good works um, appear, be known. Let your good works be known of all men. For after they have seen your good works, they will glorify your Father. I, I still want to um, continue with that particular theme, even in this particular session, so that we um, exhaust uh, this particular section um, of, of, of our theme. Um, I, I want to, in this particular episode, to focus on the fact that the Bible tells us that uh, there were three elements, there are three elements that appear in this section of scripture that is Matthew 13 from verse 24. It is the goodness of the seed, it is uh, the seedness of the seed, the fact that the seed was a seed, and also the fact that the seed bore fruit. So there are those three levels uh, that I would want us to focus on, and we have already dealt with the first uh, element which is the fruitfulness of the seed. Um, but I, would, I, I want also uh, for us to focus on the fact that it was a good seed. Um, now, <clears throat> we must understand that uh, the word that is used here for good the Greek word used for good is kalos, and uh, it refers to uh, something that is honorable. It refers to something that is noble. Uh, it refers to something that is approved. Um, it, it refers to uh, something that is beautiful, something that is handsome. Uh, it, it, it refers to all those uh, issues, and so when we deal with uh, the word good in this particular context, uh, we must understand that it refers to those things. It refers to issues of excellence. Um, it refers to 
uh, issues of genuine, um, honorable, morally good. Um, and therefore, that, 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 that is the type of uh, understanding that, that we must have uh, when we look into this particular section of scripture. But I also want to emphasize uh, the fact that the goodness that is spoken of here is spoken uh, in relation uh, to the seed. And therefore the seed uh, is, the Greek word is sperma, uh, and so what, uh, the understanding that it gives us, what we ought to understand uh, by the word sperma is number one, um, the seed as you would uh, encounter it in relation to plants, but also it is a seed as you would understand it in relation to um, uh, children, children, um, as you would experience it in relation to a, a remnant, a residue of something. And therefore, what the Lord Jesus is actually saying here is, there is a, a generation of good people that he has planted on the face of the earth. A generation of good people, a remnant of good people. Um, now if we must understand that uh, the word ecclesia, ecclesia or ecclesia, uh, whichever way you choose to pronounce it, simply means the called out ones. Um, in our words, um, we, we must also understand that when the Lord Jesus says there's a remnant of uh, good people uh, that he has planted on the face of the earth, we must understand that he is speaking of those who have come to a place of understanding who he was, who he is. He has got, he's, 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 he, this is spoken in reference to those who have recognized uh, that he is the Messiah, he is the Savior of all mankind and therefore have attained to the nature that is associated with those who believe in him. Now, <clears throat> we must therefore be able to say, um, anyone who is in Christ Jesus, anyone who believes in Christ Jesus, is conferred upon, is uh, conferred upon his righteousness and goodness, conferred upon them. I mean, the word of God in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, is very clear in saying, he who knew no sin became sin, so that we, who believe in him, become the righteousness of God. And so it's a very important thing to understand that in Christ Jesus, there is a renewing um, that comes upon all of them who believe in him a renewing that comes upon all of them uh, that understand the covenant that he has set up. Because we must understand <clears throat> the word of God um, is very clear in saying 
what the Lord Jesus has come to do is phase out the mosaic dispensation, phase out the first covenant, phase out the old covenant, and establish a new covenant. And the word of God is very clear when it says the old one is being phased out because it is old. And therefore, it is being declared obsolete. And therefore, times of reformation are upon us. The Lord is now introducing through Christ Jesus a new covenant. Now, <clears throat> I want us to read um, so that all of us <clears throat> uh, understand what the Word of God <clears throat> seeks to teach us um, about these issues. It's the book of Hebrews, and um, <clears throat> what is being uh, spoken of in this particular scripture uh, is <clears throat> the juxtapositioning of two covenants. And the Bible is very clear in saying uh, the old is being taken out and the new is being brought in. Now, Hebrews chapter 8 speaks to that. Verse 6, But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry inasmuch as he also he is also mediator of a better covenant which was established on better promises for if that first covenant had been faultless then no place would have been sought for a second because finding fault with them he says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they did not continue in my covenant. And I disregarded them, says the Lord. For this is the new covenant, the covenant that I'll make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I'll put my laws in their minds and write them on their heart. And I'll be their God and they shall be my people. None of them shall teach his neighbor and none his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them. For I'll be merciful to their uh, to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawlessness, their lawless deeds I'll remember no more. In that he says a new covenant, he has made the first obsolete. Now what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. So that's a very clear indication of what the Lord Jesus came to do. He came to establish a new covenant. And we must understand that uh, the word of God, when it says, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand or the kingdom of God has come. It's a very <clears throat> clear requirement. It says, change your disposition, change your mindset, change um, how you look at things. In other words, we must move from the paradigm of the Mosaic law and of course the paradigm of the first Adam. It's not just the Mosaic paradigm that we must let go of uh, because someone uh, who 
was not born Jewish would not understand the significance of the shift from the mosaic paradigm um, uh, to the new paradigm under Christ because they obviously um, have not been Jewish and have never lived under the law and they therefore do not understand um, um, the shortcomings of the law, the powerlessness of the law, the inability of the law to perfect us. And therefore, uh, what the Lord Jesus has come to phase out is not just the mosaic paradigm, but also the first Adam uh, uh, paradigm. In other words, the uh, the, 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 the paradigm of the first Adam because Moses himself worked under the paradigm of the first Adam. And therefore, the, and therefore the Lord Jesus comes as the last Adam to establish a new paradigm, to establish a new disposition by which we should uh, look into issues of life look into issues um, of interacting with God. And therefore, the seed that is said to be good can only attain to its goodness only under the framework that has been set up in Christ. In other words, um, we cannot attain to righteousness. We cannot attain to goodness outside of the context of believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. And not just believing, outside of the context of understanding the new covenant. It's not just a matter of faith. It's a matter of understanding. I mean, the word of God is very clear in John chapter 8. Uh, I think it's verse 31 and 32. And 33, it says, if you continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed. If you continue in my word. And therefore, there is um, a, 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 an understanding that must come upon us. There's a, an understanding, an insight that must come upon us. An insight that allows us to fully understand what Jesus has done in setting up the new covenant. Um, I mean, this is very important. I'm, I'm saying the New Testament disposition is about, is not just about our beliefs. It's also about our insight. It's also about our understanding. It's about what understanding have we come um, into the levels of insight that we possess um, that speak into our levels of understanding of what the Lord Jesus has done. And so that's very important. The word of God is very clear. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, if a man be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creature. Um, the old is gone, in our words, of course, that which was growing old, that which was no longer useful, that which uh, was becoming obsolete, the old has passed away. It has been phased out. And behold, um, all things have become, you know, there's, there's a, an important requirement that there must be a clear shift in the mindset a clear shift in the understanding that we possess so that um, it's not just um, a question of <clears throat> believing in the Lord Jesus, but also believing um, and understanding the architecture that the Lord Jesus brings with him. Let me repeat that the architecture of redemption, the architecture of salvation that the Lord Jesus brings with him so that we understand that 
Because in order for the seed to, to, to really attain to its goodness, the seed must understand its uh, transplantation. Um, we've been uprooted from another paradigm into a new paradigm. We must understand what that means. And we must be established in this new paradigm. We must be taught truths as they relate to this new paradigm. The word of God is very clear in John chapter 8. If you continue in my word, if you continue in my word, and of course you'll understand the Lord Jesus um, went on to speak things like it was said um, under Moses, it was said in the law, you do this, but I say do this. And you'll remember some weeks ago we dealt with those issues uh, when we were uh, looking into issues of uh, righteousness in the new covenant uh, is, 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 is an elevated um, uh, reality of existence. It's uh, the, word, the word of God is, is, is clear. The Lord Jesus himself is clear in saying if your righteousness does not exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees, you, you shall surely not enter the kingdom of God. So it becomes very important for us to understand that there is an, an elevated level of insight in terms of issues of righteousness that we must come to um, uh, come to grip with, um, come to uh, understand in order for us to accurately interact with what the Lord Jesus has done for us in the new covenant. And so what are we saying today? What we are saying is we must understand what the Lord, what, what the Lord Jesus has come to set up, had come to set up. Uh, but we must also understand who he was, the fact that he was the Christ, the fact that um, that um, anyone who would have believed in him. And any, anyone who believes in him, and anyone who will believe in him, stand to benefit um, greatly from the fact that the new covenant is, is established on better promises, the new covenant um, is, is, is richer uh, in terms of uh, what it makes available to those who live under it. You know what? These are issues we must fully explore for in fully, in fully exploring them, we come to a place of full understanding. And so um, there is a, a remnant, and this remnant is a noble remnant, is an honorable remnant, it's a unique remnant. These are people that God is trusting will be able to better reflect and, and better um, demonstrate the power of the kingdom and better demonstrate the benefits of the new of the new covenant under which uh, they have been uh, placed. 
And so we are we 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 are we are we are saying and arguing that there is a remnant of people that the Lord Jesus has strategically planted on the face of the earth. And this remnant derives its character and nature from the fact that it fully understands who the Lord Jesus is and it fully understands how it must interact with the Lord Jesus and it fully understands the great benefits that are brought about by the change of the covenant, by the phasing out of the Adamic paradigm and the phasing in of the last of the paradigm of the last Adam. This generation cannot fully execute the mandate for which the Lord Jesus has called them if they do not fully understand the architecture of the new covenant. Now, in, 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 in John chapter 15, the Lord Jesus is very clear in saying he is the true vine and every branch that is not connected to this true vine cannot bear fruit. And in order for us to bear fruit and much fruit, we must be connected to the true vine. For no fruit can bear fruit a fruit by itself. And the Father is glorified in us bearing fruit. Those are verses 2, verses 4 and 5 of John chapter 15. And therefore, it's going to be important for us to really zoom in into issues of, of the new covenant the disposition of the new covenant and try to deal with mindsets that uh, make it impossible for us to benefit from the new covenant. And mindsets that dispossess us, mindsets that make it impossible for us to benefit from the promises of the new covenant. And so we must focus on those, zoom in on those, for in focusing on those, we'll be able to then fully attain to the nature that we are supposed to have in Christ Jesus, the nature we are supposed to possess under Christ in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you, and the Lord make his face shine on you. We will meet uh, next week in Jesus' name.